Guys, welcome to today's lesson. This song is called Rockabilly Beach Party. I literally wrote it just to show what you can do with major scales, minor scales, um, and arpeggios, okay? And that's all in the Theory for Rockabilly and Psychobilly playlist that you can check out and work through. Um, or just work through this piece and have a listen to what I've got to say. I, I think you can get a lot out of it. Of course, you can grab the transcription from my Patreon. I'll put the playlist uh, at the end uh, in a card on this video. So you can click on that when you finish learning this or just skip to the end if you want, whatever you want to do. Um, but I need to mention quickly, guys, Worms, thank you for joining my 50th member. Absolutely amazing to reach 50 members. I cannot believe it. Um, well, I can, but I didn't expect it this soon. So now, aside from him uh, and all the other legends that have joined, I quickly want to talk about a guy who's worth checking out. His name's Francois Le Duc. Okay, I'll put the link below. He transcribes old school jazz stuff. Okay, Joe Pass, Johnny Smith, Ed Bickett, Barney Kessel, all these amazing masters of jazz guitar. And they're crazy hard pieces and, and crazy intricate stuff. He does an amazing job of transcribing it. He puts it on YouTube. You can sit there and work through it or just see what's under the hood of some of these arrangements. And uh, so I'm, I've been a big fan of him for a long time. I reached out to him recently and uh, I said, hey, I've been pledging for a while. I'm a big fan. I'm working on my own Patreon and it's going really well. And I just wanted to thank you for the inspiration. He reached back by pledging. So uh, to honor that at some point, I'm going to do a lesson on one of his transcriptions, which is going to be really cool. A little bit different for the majority of the stuff on this channel, but you guys know I'm an old school jazz guitar lover as well as all the psychobilly and rockabilly and, and stuff. So yeah, that's going to be fun. Keep an eye out for it. But yeah, for now, let's get into the guitar lesson. Okay, I felt like I had permission to wear double denim playing rockabilly. Hope that's cool with you guys. Now, when we play this tune, the very first chord is a C chord. And then it moves into a G chord. So it's really important I mention that because the very first notes we're playing happen to be two chord tones out of C. So this is going to be a really big component of this lesson is the theory. So we're putting our first finger on the third fret here, our second finger on the second fret there. Okay, so first string, second string. Now, I'm actually kind of hybrid picking that, but you can just pick both. That's completely fine. Or you could use your pick on the second string and your second finger on the first string. And what I'm actually doing is putting a lot of pressure down there and I'm squeezing up. Now, you might argue and say, hey, Adrian, that is an E flat. That's not really the note that we, we are wanting. We're actually wanting the E natural, which is simply the third of a C major. Okay, so we're thinking of that E natural. We're really just playing a little bit of a C chord. So we're bending up. Now, when, we, when it goes to the G chord, I'm, which by the way, you could also play as open. Okay. If you like, okay. Uh, the main focus is gonna be the lead here, but I'll clue you guys in on the rhythm part, especially so you know harmonically what's happening. So when it goes to the G chord, I'm... So what I'm playing there is just a G7 arpeggio, okay? The notes B, and I'm sliding in, B, D, F, and this A makes it a nine arpeggio. So what I mean by that, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll talk about the major scale here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right? So that's an A, This is if this was the root note, that would be the A, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? We have, uh, in the case of a dominant seven chord or a, a seven chord, so a G dominant seven, AKA G seven, we take the seventh note and we flatten it. And this also just keeps us in the key of C, okay? We're just playing an F natural instead of an F sharp. So this all translates to what I'm playing here. So I'm playing a B, a D, an F natural, which is the flat seven, and an A, which is the nine, okay? with the open. I may have not done that every time, but that was the intention. Okay, and the B, the B is just the third degree. One, two, three, that's a B. One, two, three, that's a B of, of a, a G chord. So, so I'll play that riff slow. Jump on the whammy if you can. Okay, so that's kind of the main theme of the the chords or playing over the C and the 
the G chord or if you want to do them open. Now, just because that's a G major chord doesn't mean we can't play a G dominant seven, okay? You can start adding, you know, extra things to your ideas and your arpeggios there. Again, check out the Theory for Rockabilly and Psychobilly uh, playlist that's on my YouTube channel. You'll find a lot of this stuff on there, okay? Now, so that's... And it repeats. But we stop there, okay? So same thing, and then we repeat again. One more time. Okay, and I wanted that to be repetitive, a simple motif that we do over and over again. Creates effects, okay? Now, what happens here, uh, we go to... And that mimics the chords. The chords now go to an A minor. And then E minor. So these are just stock chords within the key of C. I teach these chord scales, okay, as bar chords. So uh, we did a lesson on C major, which used C major, D minor, E minor, which I'm, I can go to here, or I can come right back to the open, F, G major, and A minor. Okay, or G dominant seven, if we take that off. A minor, B half diminished, and C. Okay, I do a lesson on that, but you can see clearly, even from what I just said then, I'm simply using chords out of that selection of chords because those chords all keep us in the key of C, okay? That's what we call diatonic. So, uh, after we've done four times, or open G, we go to A minor, and E minor. D minor and then G7. So now you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, so we're doing A minor 7 arpeggio and I slide into the A. A, C, E, G, B, A, G, E. Okay, so slide into the 7th fret there. So this is the A minor portion. Slide into the A. Play the C here on the fifth fret of the third string. Roll across to the second string, same fret. Pinky to the eight. Third finger to the seven. First to the fifth. Okay, and then pinky to the eight. First to the five. Now, so that is an A minor arpeggio. Okay, the A, the third degree. Again, we're staying in the key of C. So we're not going to get the major third of A, we're going to get the minor third of A. So it's an A, minor third, five, flat seven of A, because it would normally be a G sharp, okay, G natural. The nine, okay, I just discussed how we get the nine out of a scale. It's just a uh, tone up from the root note, back to the root note, and then the flat seven again and the five, okay. And that's all in the key of C. And it sounds quite kind of almost jazzy. It's really just the way we're navigating the, the scale over the chord, okay? Then we go to an E minor chord, and I just play an E minor arpeggio, B, G, E, okay? All these notes um, fit into the key of C. If we were playing an E major chord, you'd be getting a G sharp because that's the major third. One, two, three, one, two, three. Um, but we're one, two, three, so we want the one, the three, and the five. And I do them backwards. Easy, just highlighting um, those notes out of the E minor chord. So, and you can slide in, grab the Bigsby if you get time, repeat this lick again. Uh, if you can here, hit the first string open because it gives you time to get up to that chord that instead of that one. I think I actually hit the wrong note in the uh, intro there. I think I played the open B, which also sounds cool. Arpeggio. Now we do the same thing, only this time you just strum it. And if you can grab the Bigsby, which as long as you keep it close, 
there. And what I do is as I come off that strum, I sort of just bring the hand in a one motion, sweep across and give it a tap. That takes a little bit of practice, but everyone's got their own way. I've never seen anyone try to explain that as such, so. One more time. But this time, 12th fret. You can do it up or down if you like. And that's just E minor, but at the 12th fret. Same notes, okay? Like the open strings. Then, we take that same lick that I've been using throughout, so this time it's from D. So this is now a D minor nine lick. This was an A minor nine lick. I'm just moving with the chord. So the chord goes to D minor. This is A, A minor, sorry. B minor, C minor, D minor. Now we wouldn't use, uh, we wouldn't use a C minor because we're in the key of C major, okay? We wouldn't really use a B minor either because it would contain a note that we don't want. Uh, but D minor, we can use, okay? So playing 12th fret, that's a D, F, A, C, 9, the 9's E again. And I just hit an open. I just hit an open string. That kind of gives me time to get to the last lick, okay? So it's the same lick as, as this one, but from a D. So it's a D minor 9 lick, D, minor 3rd, 5, flat 7. Nine, the root, flat seven, hit an open string. As you swing up here, or you could even stop to give you time to get there, because it is a big jump, and even I found that really challenging. Um, then from here, this is just a basic G dominant seven arpeggio, okay? Okay, so uh, third fret on the sixth string, second fret on the fifth string, fifth fret on the fifth string, third fret on the, sorry, third fret on the fourth string, fifth fret on the fourth string, fourth on the third, third on the second, pinky on the second. Okay, so we're, uh, we're up to pinky on the uh, eighth fret of the second. Fifth fret of the first, first fret of the first string, pinky on the six of the second string, third fret on the second, and then we're back into the intro. So, and that's triplets. If you're having trouble getting the, look, that bit's pretty quick. You could you could do half of it. Would sound really cool too, okay? And that is a fundamental arpeggio. That would be great. I should, I, I actually want to slow that down a little bit because um, uh, I'm not trying to talk up my technique, but that's hard. Oh, that's difficult. I don't know why I wanted to make my last life so hard. And guys, that's a really important thing. Stuff doesn't have to be hard to sound good. That sounds great to me. But anyway, I'm trying too hard there. I'm working too hard. So um, now, when you get back to here, by the way, sorry, that's a G dominant nine. So there's your nine there. Okay, technically, you can play that as a chord. Great sounding little chord there. So much influence from um, you know a lot of other genres. You know. Like, like jazz and swing and all that stuff in rockabilly. That's why I think it's so essential to have an open mind. Now, the end, guys. All the same as the start. Except we end with this lick here. Now, a little disclaimer there. There's a, a little bit of chromaticism or accidental... Uh, note going on here. This is again. It's all just about stepping into the note we want. We're not really giving too much thought to the note that I'm playing. But what I'm doing, I'm going G. I'm just going back a fret because it sounds good. We're not really moving into other keys or anything. Don't think of it like that. It's just a little little slide in. Okay. So it's on the fifth fret, on the fourth string. 
that's a G, B, D. Now we're just taking that F sharp, then sliding it into a G, then sliding the E flat into the E, or you could bend in. I like the bend because it's kind of thematically fitting. Okay, so. Um... Okay, so guys, that's the whole that's the whole tune. Let's change cameras for my nice little summary. I do like closure, as you can probably tell. So you can see how that fundamental stuff can sound really great when it's used correctly. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Um, please like, subscribe, and do all those things. And let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, I'll put some cards up to help you find some other things that may take you in the direction you want to go. Yeah, but guys, thank you for watching, and uh, have a great week. Day, night, evening, whatever time it is now that you're watching it, the, the rest of whatever that is, may it be good. I'm going to go now.